I'm Rob Radosti. And I'm Millie Radosti. And welcome to our new web-based show, The Supernatural Life with Rob and Millie. We pray that this show will be a blessing to you. Uh, this is part two of a Disarming Darkness uh, series, topics that we're talking about. And, and I think that if you'll help us share this, get this out there, maybe somebody you know is struggling with some of the topics that we're going to talk about, make sure to share this on your Facebook page, send somebody an email, mm -hmm. and just help us get the word out. Um, because we believe that God is going to heal people through these shows, not because of who we are, but because of who He is. And we believe that His Spirit's even moving right now through the airwaves. And so, Lord, we just thank you, Father, for those that are watching and for the testimonies that are going to come in in Jesus name. I just want to announce quickly too that I'm going to be doing a live monthly webinar every month starting January 2015. It's going to be live, live prayer ministry and everything. So make sure you check our website for those dates and find out more about that. Now this is the second part as I said, we're talking about disarming darkness and in the first webisode, we talked about um, uh, Colossians chapter 2, how Jesus disarmed principalities and powers, and kind of how the kingdoms of this earth work. They, they try to, you know, they kind of are set up to remind people of their fallen Adam type mindset and nature instead of who we are in Christ and so we kind of talked about you know overcoming that and where we've come from me out of the Satanism and all that and my wife out of just the lies of you know abuse and mental illness and things yeah. and so I'm gonna have her share a little bit more on this uh, episode I call them webisodes and episodes because they air a lot of different places so um, but anyway uh, and 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 through 5, and I'm going to go ahead and have you read this. This is going to be our foundational scripture, so go ahead and read that. This is the New Living Translation. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. Thank you. So I love that because it says... We cast down everything that keeps people from knowing God. Right. And if the enemy could do anything, he wants to keep us from knowing God. Because if we, if we never know God, if we never know who Jesus is, I said this in the last episode, we're never going to know who we are. We're always going to be on this identity quest, this search. And obviously we can't capture our, in our own power people's rebellious thoughts and make them stop believing lies. But the power of the Holy Spirit in you can. Right. And that is your arsenal. Amen. Amen. That is our arsenal. Right. And um, so in this episode, we wanted to specifically attack and target the topic of self-injury and the spirit of, uh, I guess I'd call it the spirit of self-injury. We have lots of people that come to our events and say, my son, my daughter's involved with this, my niece, my nephew, my parents, what do I do? How do I, how do I address this topic? Mm -hmm. And, um, and I'll, I'll give some of my thoughts, you know, a little bit later, but Millie, why don't you go ahead and just share a little bit. My wife has a more practical side to her, you know, I'm the preacher. <laughs> and so I thought it'd be really powerful if she could share, you know, how can people just, uh, if they know someone or struggling with this themselves, what do they do? Where, where should they start? What do we need to know about this? Absolutely. Um, Self-injury is something that comes up a lot, especially when I'm with my husband ministering or when he comes home or sometimes he'll he'll call me with all the amazing testimonies as he's traveling and he'll be like, people really need answers. They need to know there's my niece is harming herself, my son, my daughter, and what do I do? And I just want to talk a little bit about it, shed a little light. The best thing you could do for something that's in darkness is bring it to light. And um, yeah. Self-injury is one of the nine hallmark signs of borderline personality disorder, or BPT, as P BPD, as professionals would call it. And this is not always the case, but this was the case in my situation, and it's very common. And um, it comes in many forms. I've written some notes so that I can help stay focused uh, on the. I have some specific things that I think you should know about when dealing with this. It's a very serious issue. Um, it comes in many forms cutting, substance abuse, um, extreme hazardous eating disorders, and even others. Um, there's a practical side to this. Is you want to find out the intentions of the person. If it's your daughter, your son, you love them. You're not going to just walk away from them. You're going to ha maybe have a talk with them. What are your intentions? Are they suicidal? Do they want to take their life? Um, and if so, you really need to consider getting them help immediately, uh, especially professional help. And if not, um, you might want to consider having a talk with them to let them know the value of their life. Because many people that are self-injurers or feel like they, they don't want to live anymore don't know the value of their life. They don't know who they are. And yeah. it's not going to hurt them to tell them how much you love and care about them. Um, 
you also want to make sure you're taking the shame out of getting help. There's a lot of shame, especially in churches and Christian circles, yeah. with getting professional help when you need it. And you wouldn't discourage someone with a broken arm to not go to the hospital and get it casted. And in the same way, right. if there's someone struggling with severe issues, even ones that aren't physical, but maybe mental and emotional, you wouldn't discourage them from getting help. And right. take the shame out of it. They already feel shame for this That's already. Good. <clears throat> take the shame out of getting help help and if you're struggling in this area you might be the person that needs your mind renewed yeah um really for many cutting is a control issue um many self-injurers have been in abusive situations where the control has been stripped from them and it helps them experience some sort of control and for many it's a way to redirect emotional pain so they keep returning to yeah. it because it never does the job it never covers the healing um if self-injury can also be, you know, a negative way to find temporary relief for a person, and it so becomes a personal god. Right. Unfortunately. You know, let me just interject real quick. A couple of years ago, um, I had I had opened up a door in my life and let. I was on the mission field actually in South America, Uruguay, Argentina, Bolivia, and I had opened up a door in my life and allowed depression to come in and have a foothold. And the Lord began to deal with me, and He told me depression has become your God and I didn't realize but I wow. actually I was using it as a crutch like if someone asked me well hey why don't you come get prayer or why don't you come and just hang out with us it's no I'm depressed right. and it just it's like I was worshiping that and I and I allowed that to become part of my identity and the Lord dealt with me about that so, so I just good. wanted to add that in that's so good and it's true for many people you, you can worship depression you can worship um, an illness or diagnosis and it's not shameful thing to get help for it but you don't want to lift it on a platform higher than Jesus in your life yeah absolutely um, not so I believe God can heal all people with mental illness like he did me um, and with self-injury tendencies like he did me yeah. um, there is a spiritual side it's not all practical you know because I went through many practical routes to find healing and honestly the healing came through Jesus yeah. and I, I want to make that clear as well <laughs> Um, get involved with a local church or community. Um, this is not so that the person can unload. Believe it or not, a church is not a place you go so you can unload all your problems on other people. Right. The church is where you go so that you can be surrounded by good company. The Bible says good com a bad company corrupts good character. Yeah. Implying that company influences character. Yeah. So when you surround yourself Absolutely. with people that are looking to God as their strength, looking yeah. to Jesus for their healing. And will point you that direction. And will point you that yeah. direction. That's a healthy relationship and you're, you're likely to be influenced by that. Yeah, for sure. And so... Um, not that you can't have people that you trust and and you know talk to oh, that's course. important too but it's important not to develop codependent relationships and, uh, and, and being like isolating that. and right yeah. and also mm -hmm. find biblical affirmations one of the things that was so common in in our group therapies was you had to say something nice about yourself and it wasn't a christian program but i had the hardest time with this and i still struggle with this sometimes um, i'll say something nice about you thank you honey <laughs> but find biblical affirmations about yourself speak truth about who god says you are call to it yourself forth. yeah call um, it forth call it forth um it, it can be very powerfully healing um be prayerful for them and with them not just for them but with them when when people come to you for an issue with an issue it's important to make sure you sit down with them and pray for them and, and you have confidence in who they are in Christ even yeah. when they're not displaying that's, it. and that's true accountability it's it's having someone to remind you who you are in Christ right. and help you renew your mind and you do this because you love them yeah and realize that you are not their savior but don't use that as an excuse to not be involved at all. Don't get scared off. Right. And not everybody is saying things for attention. Maybe some are, but not everybody is. And it's important to make sure you can bring a team by these people and yeah. lift them up in community. Absolutely. Well, uh, you know, and I think you just shed a lot of light. And I think people, I mean, I even learned some something just sitting here right next to my wife. <laughs> and uh, But uh, but I hope that, that you've been encouraged. And I just want to... I just want to kind of start in closing by saying this. If you will believe a lie about yourself, then you will believe a lie about God and who God mm. is. And so, That's very true. Um, and so I believe it's, it really comes back to identity. God was in Christ reconciling the whole earth to himself, all the universe. Um, way back when, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. But when we believe lies about ourselves, we're never going to really be able to see God for who He is and how good He truly is. And um, so instead of defining it as an attack, like a demonic attack, 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to define it as an assault. When something comes against you, a lie, maybe it's an accusation against yourself in your own mind, let's call it this, an assault against the mind of Christ. Because that's what you have. You have the mind of Christ. And so that's an assault against the mind of Christ. And that's why we need to cast down imaginations. Every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God and who Jesus is. And we've seen specific miracles. We've seen people threaten suicide and say, if God doesn't intervene like he intervened with you, I'm going to do it right now and they had a radical encounter with Jesus they were on their face for four hours tranced out in a trance seeing heaven and God revealed himself to them and he'll do the same thing for you so let's yes. just take a minute and let's just pray for everybody father in Jesus name I thank you for every viewer that is watching right now and I bind the spirit of mental illness and and self-injury and depression yes. and bipolar and all these things that accusations and assaults that come against the mind of Christ go in the name yes. of Jesus from all of our friends and uh, I thank you Father, for filling them with peace and power and love and a sound mind in yes. Jesus' name. And I thank name. you, Lord, for wrapping your arms of love around yes, them, that Lord. they are going to yes, know Lord. their value and the worth yes, of their life. Lord. You died on the cross for them. You love them. You would give yes, anything Lord. for them. Yes, thank you, Father. In mm, Jesus', in Jesus name. name. Hey, we love you guys. Please consider partnering with us. Go to robertosti.com. Sign up for teachings and emails. And again, you are loved. You are reconciled. Now go make Jesus famous. See you next time. Hey guys, don't forget to come and join me in Washington State for three cities, December 7th to the 8th, Honolulu, Hawaii, December 12th to the 14th. Don't forget to register for these events at robertosti.com. The New Year, Birmingham, Alabama, second weekend of January in Victorville, California, January 23rd to the 25th. An exciting announcement, my brand new autobiography, and he unleashed me to the world that's been in the works since 2003, is being released and shipped this February. Be sure to pre-order your copy today at robertosti.com. Thank you.